have you ever felt? Are you listening? Damn. Get used to this. A Vitamix, you put, if it doesn't blend too much or a regular blender, put a little water, you can cultivate yeah, it, and stuff like that. And so this, so um, this is just out of here, Joy. There's nothing okay, else. No, that's the one there. Okay, it looks really watery. Usually it's not as watery. I feel like I should drink it and taste it. Look, that's definitely bitter and definitely out here. Okay, <laughs> now I don't know, we need a tub or something. Because basically basically what we're going to do is we're going to put this on her, on her foot on her leg. So, yeah. So if you have a foot that you want to be better than the other one, then that'll be great. It seems, as it seems, it, it definitely was a trend and Louis Pasteur got into the that so arena of eradicating, killing, going after the things that he didn't want to be in the environment. But on his deathbed, and this is the important part, um, and this happens to a lot of people, they start to recant, start to, to change their views on things. And so when he was on his deathbed, in fact, he was like, I guess several people told me it was maybe 10 years before he died. But, you know, the, the motion started, it was set in motion, this idea of killing. And I'm not saying there's never a need for it, but he campaigned for years to try to let people know that if you're constantly trying to eradicate and kill everything that bothers you, you're going to create a problem eventually. One problem is that the antibiotics get more and more stronger, and then you, you can't, I'm sorry, the, the viruses and the bacteria get stronger, and so the antibiotics get stronger and they can't do their job, okay? So, to change the environment, that's the key here. So whether you have a fungus, whether you have, he had inflammation inside of his leg, all around his bone and everything, he was in a lot of pain. And you can see by the redness the way it looked. So to change the environment, you know, there was an issue with pH. So apple cider vinegar, now I'm not really big on, I mean there are some programs for treatment using internally, but um, I'm, just, I'm just telling you right off, I'm not a real big fan of using any kind of vinegar on a regular basis because it strips the mucus and stuff. And I won't get into that. I'm going to try to make it really short to the point. You know, one of the things I did for my lectures is, um, and this is what I've done for years and years, 20, 20 plus years, I would read and study and study and saturate my mind with so much information that I didn't have to have an outline or a bunch of notes. I just, it was in my mind. So I just start pouring out my brain and as things start to line up, I just have to share it. So I apologize sometimes um, I just go longer and longer and it's hard for me to get right to the point. But I want to make it clear that I'm not advocating everybody using vinegar for everything and internally mm -hmm. stuff, but there are some great treatments, and especially with apple cider vinegar, because it can help change the environment. See, some things that are acid, apple cider vinegar is one of them, and lemon juice is one, even though they're acidic, they can, they can push an alkaline condition. So this right here, what we're going to do, you know, is we're going to get this soap in apple cider vinegar. I don't know how you can do that, but basically you got to soak it in apple cider vinegar. And then this right here, you can put your foot in there. Okay. And we're just going to, basically, this is supposed to be runny. And what I'll do is I'll go ahead and... Steve, uh, uh, is that for sprains also, or just It for could be anything you want to heal. If you have a sprained ankle, sprained uh, wrist, or whatever, it, it forces these two elements in. You're changing the environment to be more, um, to speed up the healing process. And it, it changes, it gets rid of funguses, it heals uh, the bones, it, it corrects so many problems, inflammation, and gout, and of course gout is dietary and all that, but I'm going to go ahead and put some of this around. I'm going to put this, all this here. And basically, you smother with aloe vera. There's not too much on there. There should then be a lot. Come in with the vinegar after. And then basically, what you're going to do is you're going to take this and you're going to wrap in apple cider vinegar. I mean, in apple cider vinegar. Oh. Then you're going to take the plastic bag over here. So bottom line, I did this when I was 13 to this, this man, and he was in his 60s, and his accident was when he was 18. 
And he was so excited because all of the inflammation had gone away, the pain was gone in one night because this plastic is the, the trick. So what you do is you have to take this and you go to bed with this and you sleep there. Okay, my hand. So for the example, just hold that for a second. So, so it's airtight. So you could have a cut. You could have one of the great the big things is staphylococcus. People suffer with staph and sores around their feet and stuff like that. And, and of course you can do hydrotherapy and you can use everything from chlorinated water, which kills them, to um, pine oil and tea tree oil and stuff like that. Again, you're using the concept of killing the thing, which is okay if you're using natural remedies, you're using things that are um, you know, semi-toxic but not toxic to the environment. But this is changing the environment and, and speeding up the healing process. So you could use it for all kinds of stuff. Uh, my mother is, uh, as soon as I get back, I'm going to do this for her because I noticed her nails. She's been suffering with a fungus on her foot. After lunch, I will do the uh, dessert, which I've already made, and it'll be on the table today. So you, you heard about noodles. And what we use in the raw food industry is zucchini. I have carrot, cabbage in there. And what we do is just to strengthen like that when you're making your noodles. And you want your vegetables to be as many colors as, as you can because each one has different nutrients in it. And uh, also it looks pretty. Um, so that's how I deal. There is also called a spiralator. Uh, I got one and I tried it out and I didn't like it at all. <laughs> I like this, it's much easier. So I'm just going to do this fast together, and then I'm going to throw the salad together. And by the way, before we go, I do have recipes for you. But, you know, Put in whatever you think might, you might like in there. She is yeast. The under, um, this one actually is on the bag. And it has Alfredo sauce. And I've already made the sauce, but I wasn't planning on demonstrating it, and I just would have made it for extra food today to come. It's softer than uh, what it is, because kale it sometimes can be very um, chewy and not, not easy to chew. But this usually makes it better to do. So I, ha I have everything that goes in. If you have your gallbladder and you never had stones removed surgically or through the, the sound and sonic sound or the different ways that they use to, to get the stones dissolved and whatever, get them out of the body. Um, it is theoretically, uh, um, anatomically possible that you could start passing some stones. Okay, so I'm, I'm saying this, I'm not a doctor. The doctors say, oh, this is all focus focus and it's all garbage and it's not true. Um, you just have to look at the works. I always say that um, liars know to ha liars know how to make figures, but figures never lie. And you look at the at the blood works, you look at the arteries, you look under electron microscopes, and you see the results. Uh, but all over the internet, they say that gallbladder program doesn't work, and it's just the oil emulsified, and those are the stones, they're not real stones. But I know that people benefit from their health. They've done it many times. Um, there are stones that, whether they're manufactured in the gut, you know, through the process of the oil or what, I don't know, but it does make the liver flush and the gallbladder purge stones. Right? So I always tell people it is good to do the gallbladder flush or, or purge first and then follow up with this liver flush, which is number one. Okay? But even if you do that, you might need to, your endothelial cells and everything in your arteries could be bad, could be messed up, and you need to clean them out and get them ready to pump blood and right with the body, okay? So how many of you want to know how to do that? It's really, really simple. Okay, if I had my chalkboard, what I'd be doing, I'll just tell you, what I would do is I would draw a picture of a car with the engine and I'd draw a picture of a body with the internal organs say, you know, here's the car and here's the human body, and interestingly enough, they have these apps now that tells you when to change your oil and, you know, maintenance for your car. 
people treat their cars much better than they do their bodies, which is very, very sad to me, but very true. And so when you look at the car over here, you're looking at the engine, which has an oil pump, which has an oil filter, and you look at the body, which has an oil pump, which is the heart, and an oil filter, which is the liver. So we're going to talk about the liver. A lot of people think that if you just mix a bunch of stuff together, all those elements are going to actually be the elements that are going to heal you. We already touched on the basis that Jesus does the healing, and it's our simplicity of going into natural remedies, but we have to connect the dots to Jesus, okay? So we know he's doing the healing, but there is some common sense to it. The liver's job is there for, for filtering blood. That's his job. So how do we make the liver work to filter blood? How do we actually get it Maybe jump start it, flush it, you could use that word. How do we work with the liver to make the liver do its job, okay? Well, one of the great things is garlic. I, I go to some of the hospitals sometimes when I hear these uh, advertisements that Dr. So-and-so is gonna lecture on herbs or this or that or the other, and I go and I'm always surprised because they're usually against the herbs. They want to uh, regulate it, they want to you know, get them off the, off the market or whatever, lettuce and cabbage and broccoli and spinach and comfrey and you know, those things like that. I mean, they're basically trying to get food out of our, you know, that they will control the food. Well, garlic is one that no doctor disagrees with. Every doctor agrees that garlic is great for cleaning out the arteries and what it does is it affects the liver. It goes to the liver and it boosts the liver, it jump starts the liver, it kills parasites in the liver and flukes and different things like that. So what you do is you start out, this is a uh, this is a 30 day program where you can clean your arteries. Now, I'm not saying this as a, a guarantee as a physician, I'm just saying this is my opinion, I'm in America, this is my freedom of right to speech, right? I can say this. I believe in my body and by uh, the promises of other doctors who give this guarantee, and I can't even mention their names right now because several of them in trouble, but beforehand and afterwards, beforehand the blood works are bad and they do this for 30 days and afterwards the blood works are completely different. Of course, this is along the diet too. So I'm not saying continue your bad diet. This is in, in conjunction with it. Stop eating every breakfast for 30 days, okay? And I wish I had... You're going to do this, this shake that I'm going to tell you about. Oh, okay. instead of breakfast. Yes, you're not going to eat breakfast. You're going to do this, this, you could call it a smoothie or whatever you want to call it. Um, so you're going to get dark. I want to do this really fast, so I'm trying to figure out how to do this. Because this is going to take way too long. I'll just tell you, and then I'll kind of demo so you can see and not do it exactly right and put it in your brain and write it down. Okay, so here, have your pen and paper. The formula starts out on day one with one chunk of garlic. It goes in here, okay, and you put, take the husk off, the skin. Ginger is, of course, it's a, it's a circulatory herb. It's wonderful for, for extremities and increasing circulation, but it's also an anti-nausea. And if you have things going in the stomach that typically you want to vomit out or you can't hold down, ginger helps that stay down. And so it's like the dynamic duo with, with garlic and ginger for the heart. It's really no, known for that. But ginger is an anti-nausea, so that goes in there as well. Okay? Then you're going to put in a... Oh, we need our, our, our extra virgin olive oil and a tablespoon. Then you're going to put in one cup of orange juice. And you're going to want to clean the skin and make sure it's not sprayed with stuff and it's organic. But I like to put in a little bit of the skin. How much? Just guess on it. Take as much as you want, but not the whole orange, obviously, because there are oils inside this orange that are very detoxing, and they'll go straight to the liver because the liver processes oils. So on it, okay, great. So on an empty stomach, um, and I always do my lectures. Uh, with the, I'm one of those no oil guys, like Dr. Colton okay? So this is for a program, it's for a treatment, it's not heating and smothering and putting on all your food. But uh, you take a tablespoon 
of extra virgin olive oil. It has to be extra virgin. Okay? And you're going to put it in, in here as well. With a piece of the lemon. And then, thank you so much. And then what we're going to do is you're going to put in your cup of orange juice. Okay? Which, this is not a cup. And then you're going to put in two more cups of water. Distilled water is best for this particular uh, recipe. Okay. Okay, well, yeah, I'll explain. I'll explain. This is important to write this down, right? So you've got in here one chunk of ginger, one clove of garlic, one piece of uh, orange, a tablespoon of olive oil, cup of citrus, two cups of water. You blend that together and you drink it. Very important, some really important points here. You can't do this if you drink coffee. You, you know, you can't mix it with other things. You can't even drink this while you drink your water or drink a soda or something like this, uh, like that. <laughs> you have to wake up. It is important to drink some water when you wake up and flush your body. Make sure you wait an hour or so after that. Whenever you normally eat your meal, this is the meal replacement, you understand? So I, I don't recommend, and I really explain how we shouldn't drink with our meals, because it, a lot at least, because it dilutes your digestive fluids and you can't digest your food as well. It causes digestive problems and lack of assimilation. So you want to drink this instead of your meal, okay? The next day, Wait, you want to put this? Okay. Mm -hmm. two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil, two pieces of ginger, and you blend that together, and you drink that the next day. And the third day, you go up another, a third. And the fourth day, you go up a fourth. And the fifth day, you go up a fifth. water to, to where it's just a little bit kind of runny um, to where it can blend all together and then um, the trick to solidifying it and for it to stick together is the flax meal so the flax meal is really important and that way it's easier on your digestion because you have the flax in there with with the almonds because flax is great mm -hmm. so yeah I just I just need a little knife so I can how much flax? Uh, uh, one half cup flax meal. Um, one and a half? One half cup. Yeah, because you don't need a super lot, but you can put more if you'd like. You can put a cup, you can put, you know, more or less, but at least a half a cup. Um, and water? And, yeah, I'm going to do a little bit of water. Just about the Excalibur. And this is a nine degree dehydrator. And I don't know, I think the five tray is like a hundred and some twenty-five dollars or something like that. And the nine tray is a little more expensive, but it's really worth it. Especially if you're wanting to do raw and some of these. Can I just have sorry? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. um, they also come with a round one, a plastic round dehydrator, but they're not as good. Uh, you can put a lot more in one of these than you can in the, the plastic dehydrator. And I think these work better because I had one given to me like this, but I left it at a friend's place in Tepecayo and they left it out in the rain and it all worked. Yeah. Do you have yours right now? I have mine. And I can actually, yeah, I can actually right here. I can put it up on the table to do with the dehydrator. Do you have yours right now? I have mine. And I can actually right here. I can put it up on the table to do with the Excalibur. And this is a nine degree dehydrator. And I don't know, I think the five tray is like a hundred and some twenty-five dollars or something like that. And the nine tray is a little more expensive, but it's really worth it. Especially if you're wanting to do raw and some of your kids on it. Just have these. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. uh, they also come with a round one, a plastic round dehydrator, but they're not as good. Uh, you can put a lot more in one of these than you can in the, the plastic dehydrators. And I think these work better because I had one given to me like this, but I left it at a friend's place in Papakeo and they left it out in the rain and it all worked. And we're going to do a little bit of water. So I'm actually going to get some water. Um, oh, thank you. So Lynn's going to get me some water. And, and then that's it. And then once we have the garlic and the water in there, um, you just put enough water to, to where it's just a little bit kind of runny, um, to where it can blend all together. And then um, the trick to solidifying it and for it to stick together is the flax meal. So the flax meal is really important. and. That way it's easier on your digestion because you have the flax in there with, with the almonds because flax is great. So how much So yeah, I just I just need a little knife so I can um, how much so can flax? Just, uh, uh, one half cup flax meal. Um, one and a half? One half cup. Yeah, because you don't need a super lot, but you can put more if you'd like. You can put a cup, you can put, you know, more or less, but at least a half a cup. Um, and water? And, yeah, I'm going to do a little bit of water. Just about. Sarah's doing a good job. Oh, thank you. Her assistant, her little baby, runs around, helps her. So she's making a raw food, a raw vegan pizza. So here's the crust. So we're doing um, to make it. three tomatoes. If you guys wanted to write it down, I'll just tell you. Um, 20, I used about 25 of the sun-dried tomatoes and um, this is the one from Costulas, the Sunday tomatoes and the hundred knowledge and the best of my ability and what I know so far. So but um, so I'm not an expert on parasites, so that's why I said research it. Making flax crackers and pizza. <laughs> Me. I do. Well, well um, it's definitely, it's definitely a fun toy if you like. 